Every man is basically saying, I want to tackle a great challenge, I want to do great things, but I'm really not sure that I know exactly what I'm doing and I hope nobody finds out. I don't think my wife realizes that what happens the night before in the bedroom absolutely impacts the way I feel about myself the next day at the office. Honestly, the question that every man is asking in every area of his life is this sense of, do I measure up? Am I any good? And, and one of the big pieces of that is, does she desire me? Am I desirable? Welcome to Pure Passion. I'm Jonathan Darty, your host for today's program. Ever wondered why your man does what he does and thinks what he thinks? Do you really understand what he wants in a sexual relationship? or the marriage in general. After conducting research on thousands of men throughout the country, our guest, Shanti Feldhahn, discovered that odds are you don't even have a clue. Even most guys don't have a clue or are unable to articulate what it is that drives them, that truly satisfies them, that will bring them a sense of peace and fulfillment. If you had problems in your relationships with men, watch carefully, because this show will open your eyes as never before to what you can do to change all that. When I was doing all the research to understand how men think, um, because that's really sort of the focus of this, was understanding what it is that a, a man, a husband, a boyfriend really is privately thinking and feeling. It doesn't necessarily feel able to say or articulate. And one of the things I realized is that we women have this complete misunderstanding of what's really going on inside them and what they most need from us. And we're trying so hard to do all these loving things for them. And we really want to show them how much that we love them. And we don't realize that that actually isn't their primary need. And that actually, according to my surveys of these men, and I did tons of nationally, three actually, three scientific nationally representative surveys of men all over the country. I've interviewed and surveyed more than 3,000 men now for these books. Um, but what I found is that they actually said that they would give up feeling that their wife loved them if they could just feel that she respected them and that she trusted them and believed in them and admired them. And all of those things are more important to the average guy even than feeling that his wife loves him. And that's this huge disconnect that we don't realize because we we don't know that we'll say honey i love you and we'll do all these things we hope he'll find to be loving and we don't realize that maybe at the same time we're criticizing him or teasing him in public in front of his friends or you know questioning his decisions all the time and all of those things make a guy feel like she just doesn't respect me and that is a man's most painful feeling and he won't feel loved so that's what we have to learn as women. The reason for, um, for this being so important to them is this huge surprise for me, honestly, and I think for many women, which is that our, our real kind of confident looking men, you know, we kind of think they're, we kind of think they're a little too confident and think, you know what, he could be taking down a peg or two, right? Um, but what I found as I was interviewing all these guys is that underneath that, there is this deep question, this deep vulnerability, this deep self-doubt that, that we don't even know is there. And it's this insecurity that's running underneath the surface and every man is basically saying, I wanna tackle a great challenge, I wanna do great things, but I'm really not sure that I know exactly what I'm doing and I hope nobody finds out. And it's this deep vulnerability. And because of that, because they're always questioning how am I doing as a husband? How am I doing as a father? Because they're always asking that question. That is the reason why this sense of respect is so huge for them, because it really speaks to what is their deepest heart cry inside of them. One of the things that, um, that we as women really don't understand about men is actually the issue of physical intimacy inside our marriage relationship 
is a huge part of unlocking their emotions because it, it does this thing, the way the men described it, it was really interesting. They got, they were very sensitive about this. It, it was very, very clear that when we think of physical intimacy in marriage as, as women, and we think of it as kind of being a primarily a physical need for him, that's kind of the category we put it in, you know, it's a physical need, it's a physical urge. Sometimes we think of it as a physical demand, right? And that's not what I heard from the men at all. And that instead, what I kept hearing from these men was this deep need to feel desired by their wives and this deep emotional question and this deep sense of that their wife desiring them, it really kind of solves that, that deep in, inner insecurity. And it answers that question in a very fundamental way for, for a man. And really, honestly, the question that every man is asking in every area of his life is this sense of, do I measure up? Am I any good? And, and one of the big pieces of that is, does she desire me? Am I desirable? And we don't realize that that is a huge part of how men feel about themselves in every other area of their life. And so suddenly, one of the things that I found on the survey is that men said they could have all the sex that they wanted. They could, they could have as much physically as they wanted and still not be satisfied if they felt like their wife really didn't desire them and it was just kind of doing it out of obligation or duty that I think it was 97% of the men on the survey said that that wouldn't do it because it's it's for a man it's about feeling that his wife absolutely desires him and that builds him up to have the sense of confidence and the sense of well-being in all of the other areas of his life. And conversely, if he doesn't feel desired, if he feels like it's a little too easy for her to say, you know, I'm just really tired, it gives him this dragging sense of depression and this lack of well-being in all of the other area of his, li of his life. And so what you're hearing there, that's not primarily a physical need at all, really. It is this huge emotional need to feel desired. One of the things that was um, a very practical finding that um, was also a big surprise. I mean, everything that I was talking about was really a surprise. I spent all my time going, really, you're kidding? No, huh? <laughs> so I spent all my time saying that. Um, but the, the, one of the things that was a very sort of practical day-to-day -day level, um, I think that would help women to understand their men is that when their husband approaches them for physical intimacy, that he's feeling very vulnerable. A lot of men said that that is their most vulnerable time period over the course of their days, you know, in their day-to-day -day life, because it does go so deep into how they feel about themselves. So when they get the sense that, yeah, I'm so undesirable, I can't even compete with her pillow, right? It, it gives that sense of rejection and that sense of depression, and it really sends a man into this lack of well-being, this lack of confidence in every other area. And, and frankly, I, I thought this was really articulated very well by one of the men on the survey who said, and, and to me this surprised me a lot, when he said, I don't think my wife realizes that what happens the night before in the bedroom absolutely impacts the way I feel about myself the next day at the office. It's a one-for-one -one relationship. That really surprised me. Ready for an eye-opener? Best-selling author Shanti Feldhahn has written an important book called For Women Only, What You Need to Know About the Inner Lives of Men. With findings from a groundbreaking national survey and personal interviews of over 1,000 men, Shanti reveals important keys for understanding the men in your life. While learning why men do the things they do, you'll also discover how to love your man for who he really is, not who you think he is. To get For Women Only, go to purepassion.us. If you own an Android device, iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch, we have an awesome gift for you, and it's free. Just go to your favorite app store, do a search for Pure Passion, and download access to over 130 videos, including every episode of Pure Passion TV, plus entire conferences, old TV programs, and more. Listen to files of outstanding lectures on child abuse, homosexuality, and sex addiction, plus read and access our websites and our Facebook and Twitter pages. 
That's the free new app from Pure Passion. You know, one of the big surprises for women um, that actually in this culture is one of, to me, one of the most heart rending misunderstandings that we have is we as women simply don't understand what it means when we say that men are visual and how big of a component this is for their everyday life in this culture. See, even the most, and this is what I found in the research, is that even the most godly and devoted Christian husband, he can't not notice when, is, when a woman is dressing in a way that's calling attention to a good figure, he can't not notice. It's out there everywhere, and, and it's his brain is attuned to it. It's a biological reality, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but the problem is, is that even if, even if he's like seeing a woman walk down the street or an image on TV, and, and it's up and gone before he can look away, that image, these images get burned into a man's brain, and they can come back when he doesn't want them there. And so constantly, every day, all day, men in this culture are having to take those thoughts captive, and the image pops up in his mind, no, I can't think about that, I have to put that away. And then another image comes up, or then he sees somebody else, or even at, at church, even in a, the office, in these places you would think it wouldn't be as much of an issue. Huh. And it, it happens because we as women, our brains are simply not wired the same way as men, and we do not understand the way that we're dressing causes this problem. We have to get this. And it's simply, the biological reality is simply that there is a part of the brain, it's in the back of the brain, it's called the nucleus accumbens. It's part of the brain stem, kind of the automatic area of the brain um, where you're not thinking, it's like digestion and breathing and stuff like that. And that, the nucleus accumbens is the part of the brain that lights up when you haven't eaten all day and you walk into a room and you see food. It's like this gut level biological response that kind of craves that and is drawn towards that. It's not thinking about it, it's just this uh, gut level thing. Well, when a man sees a woman who's dressing in a way that calls overt attention to a good figure, his nucleus accumbens lights up and it's this automatic gut level biological drawn to that kind of response. And then he has to go, stop it, you know, don't think about that. And that's when he sort of pulls in his thoughts, which are the front of the brain, and he goes, I'm not gonna think about that right now. And here's the problem. We women don't get this because our brain doesn't have that same response. When we see an attractive man, our nucleus accumbens stays dark. <laughs> and we don't have this like gut level thing, which I know is really disappointing to our husbands, but it's just the way that women are wired. And we instead, we think to ourselves, <laughs> he's an attractive man, right? It's a thinking oriented response from the beginning. And so we don't understand this gut level thing that is happening over and over and over in the minds of our husbands or teenage boys or whomever out there in society. And so I spend a lot of my time in my ministry helping women and our teenage daughters to understand this so that we can help our men and support our men in this culture rather than making this problem worse. And this is really honestly something that is very, very important day to day for men. One of the, the pieces of that puzzle um, that we really need to get um, about men's visual nature is to realize that this takes it off the table for the wife who's going, what, he's tempted by other women and how can I ever trust him again? And uh, you know, cause it, for a woman, it can kind of feel really insecure, right? And so I always tell women, if you feel like suddenly, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, that's for you, that's a thought you need to take captive, honestly. Because here's the reality, is that this is a biological reality that men were never supposed to be tempted with, they were never supposed to see the stuff that they see in this culture, right? This is the way their brain is wired. It was supposed to be a good thing, it was supposed to be just a bonding thing, because the only man, the only, the only woman that a man was ever supposed to see that way was, was his wife, right? Um, so it would be like, you know, the image would pop up when he's out in the field and he'd think, oh, I gotta get home, right? Um, but that is not the case today anymore. And, and men constantly, what they're telling me is they constantly, the thought pops up, the image pops up, he shouldn't, it shouldn't be in there, but it is, because he lives in this culture, takes it captive, tears it down over and over and over again. That, I tell the women who are suddenly insecure and worried, I'm like, no, 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 you gotta understand. This is a man who's making a choice to honor you 
every day, making the hard decision all day, every day. Don't you dare get mad at him for having this biological reality. That's the way that God wired him. God wired this to be a good thing. And so I tell women, realize this has nothing to do with you. This is him dealing with the biological reality in a culture where he should never have this. You can come alongside him instead of shaking your finger at him. You can come alongside him and lock arms with him. I'm gonna pray for you, honey. Whatever it is that you need from me, some men will have grown pretty weary of that struggle of constantly taking the thoughts captive. Some men will have looked at things they shouldn't have looked at. Some men will have gotten trapped. And, and that is especially when those men said that they need their wives alongside them. The wife can't be the police, but the wife absolutely has to understand how common this is and how to support her husband through that, because that is gonna be one of the primary ways that he gets free of this. I've had so many men in these interviews say that they've asked their wife, you know, the group at church is doing a, a book study on um, you know, every man's battle, and I'd really like to go to it. Or, you know, the group has a, a Celebrate Recovery group um, that has a group for men that are sort of struggling with some of these issues, and I'd really like to go to that. And so many men have told me they've tried to approach their wives with that, and the wives have freaked out because they suddenly think their husband is something other than normal, you know? And, and so I tell women, don't freak out. Realize this is a man who's trying to honor you. He's trying to address this. Support him in it. One of the things that was really encouraging to me um, when I was interviewing all the guys and like dealing with my reaction to this as, as a wife myself was it was great for me to hear, you know, not only does this not have anything to do with me, um, but it's actually, it doesn't impact my husband's feelings for me at all. The fact that he's constantly dealing every day, taking these thoughts captive and seeing these images he should never have seen. Um, it doesn't impact his feelings for me. And the other thing that was hugely encouraging for me to hear is that so many of the men said, you gotta understand, we loathe this temptation as much as our wives do. We would turn it off in a second if we could. All of that together helps us to take it off the table of thinking that it's somehow about us and feeling insecure as a result. Ready for an eye-opener? Best-selling author Shanti Feldhahn has written an important book called For Women Only, What You Need to Know About the Inner Lives of Men. With findings from a groundbreaking national survey and personal interviews of over 1,000 men, Shanti reveals important keys for understanding the men in your life. While learning why men do the things they do, you'll also discover how to love your man for who he really is, not who you think he is. To get For Women Only, go to purepassion.us. Have you ever wondered what makes pornography so powerfully addicting? Why is it that people get so deeply ensnared by its tentacles? Dr. William Struthers uses the latest discoveries in brain science to help answer that question in his book, Wired for Intimacy. Sure, we know the power of sin works on a spiritual plane, but it'll fascinate you to learn how it also operates within the very structures of the brain. This is groundbreaking work on the brain chemistry of sexual addiction that just might uncover the piece you've been missing. Get Wired for Intimacy at purepassion.us. I'd like to just tell you a little bit about what the scripture teaches us about sex. Sex is not an end in itself. It is a means to an end. So what is the end? It is relationship and it is creation. God designed sexuality in order for people to be able to express their love one to another. And that love is at several different levels. See, God created a spiritual being, so there's a deep spiritual knowing that God intends to come through sexual relationships. We are soul and we are body. There is desire, there is enjoyment, there is relationship, there's emotions that are involved, and then there's the bodily union. And in that relationship that God established for men and women to have together, he was enabling them to have a very, very deep knowing. And out of that knowing, out of that understanding of each other, comes life. Because it's through sexual relationships that conception takes place, 
and that the life that God gave to humanity is replicated. So the objective of sex is not sex in itself. The objective of sex is the fulfillment of relationship and the creation of life and the giving of life to that relationship. It's very interesting that in Hebrew, the same word that is used for knowing God is also used for knowing each other in sexual relationships. The depth of intimacy is implied right there in that wonderful word. Sex provides that means of intimacy between man and woman. Now, sex, which is an end in itself, I want to tell you frankly, is a dead end. It is going nowhere. It means that people are just looking on the sex as being the objective of the relationship, and then they move on to another relationship and another relationship. And every relationship they establish is getting deeper and deeper into a mess because they're looking to sex to fulfill something which God never intended it to do. Sex was never intended by God to be outside of a loving relationship between a man and a woman. That is God's best. It is through that relationship that creation is replicated. It is through that relationship that that intimacy of knowing provides the security of love for children that are being grown up in the nurture of the Lord. They're brought up in the love and the grace and the mercy and the encouragement of the living God. But when people make sex the objective of a relationship, without all the other things involved, they are taking themselves down a dead-end road which is going nowhere for the rest of their lives. And as long as they see sex as just being something to do in order to have orgasmic relief or orgasmic enjoyment, they are missing out on all that God intended. I know this is radical for some people because they have looked on sex as something which is part of their everyday life with all sorts of different people. But when we actually do it our way, we actually end up in Satan's way. He wants us to get involved in the ungodly. I find it fascinating that the most sung song of the 20th century was Frank Sinatra's, I'll do it my way. Few people realize that the first words of that song is when I face the final curtain, I'll say I did it my way. It is almost laughing in the face of God. And that's what the world does when they make sex just the objective of a relationship as opposed to the means through which God intended that relationship to be fulfilled in a one-man, one-woman relationship of marriage. Marriage is meant by God to be a covenant. It's meant to be something that's permanent. It's meant to be something that's an expression of love, an expression of His love. And it's a fulfillment of our destiny within human relationships. That's what God planned. That's what he purposed. And when we actually do it our way, we are creating for ourselves a future problem which will only need to be resolved. And the deeper we, deeper we get into it, the harder and harder it is to get it sorted. So can I encourage you to go God's way? And if there have been relationships in the past that have been wrong, recognize it and say, God, I want to get this sorted. I no longer want sex just to be an objective of my life. I want to have rightful relationships and I want to ask you to heal me so that I won't be looking for love in all the wrong places and entering into relationships which God never intended me to have. When you talk about Uh, physical intimacy, you talk about the sexual relationship issues. We were really, really curious when we started the research for for young women only and for young men only, um, because I thought if there is this enormous emotional component when sex is happening inside marriage, which is where God says it's designed for, I wonder if there's an emotional component or an emotional ramification if it's happening outside marriage, which where God says it's not designed for. And as an analyst, I had no idea what I was going to find. And oh my gosh, when we started hearing from the focus groups and then we got the surveys back from these hundreds of anonymous teenage girls and teenage boys um, and sort of single young men and women, 
we did the surveys of uh, 15 to 21 year olds. Um, the emotional component is huge, but it's reversed from in marriage. See, what's happening with the guys is just like their adult male counterparts, sex is hugely making them feel desired. It's this enormous switch that's flipped inside of them, this emotional component. But the problem is, is because it's happening outside of that lifetime marriage commitment, they start worrying that this girl is going to go give this powerful feeling to somebody else. And two thirds of the guys said they probably were the ones trying to talk their girlfriend into it, right? But two thirds of them said the minute she did, they started to doubt whether they could ever trust her again. That is huge. That's not us saying this, and that's not a teacher saying it, it's not a youth pastor saying it. That's these boys themselves saying that they would start to doubt whether they could really trust her. And it, it undermines the relationship that they were probably trying to build. And the girls, the number that we found on the girls, it was even higher, where the girls said, you know, we have hormones too. <laughs> we have the physical desires too. But 82% of the girls said that as soon as they crossed that line, because they knew it was happening outside of a lifetime marriage commitment, they start worrying about losing him. And they start feeling a little insecure and a little possessive and a little clingy and kind of like, okay, we're gonna do everything together now, right? And, and this insecure, possessive, clingy girlfriend is usually what, not what the average teenage boy is going for. Um, and they don't want that feeling, just like the boys. They don't want to feel a lack of trust suddenly kind of getting in the way with their girlfriend. And these girls don't want this insecurity kind of getting in the way, it just happens. And so this is an example, was an example to me of where we did this research completely across all racial backgrounds, all ages, all religious backgrounds, and it was universal. And it really showed us, you know, this is the reason why God talks about waiting until marriage, is because He knows that there's going to be this emotional component that they don't want, it just happens. And just like within marriage, it, it is such a good example to me of how the research really does show what God has said all along. I don't know about you, but after that presentation, I understand myself a lot better. And now I just need to get a copy of this DVD for my wife. Isn't it amazing how men and women can be wanting the same things, but are in conflict because they don't know that about the other person? Shanti has written a series of books along the same lines for each segment of the population, and we highly recommend every one of them. For women only, for men only, for young women only, for young men only. There's a book just for you. Visit our website to find out more. That's www.purepassion.us. And until we see you again next week or online, I'm Jonathan Darty for Pure Passion.